and I went downstairs to leave the hotel and I could just hear gunshots outside and I was like, oh, I've got a bus booked. What? I said to the reception girl, I've got a bus booked, what's going on? She's like, oh, they've blown up the prison wall, all the prisoners have escaped, the police wow. are them. Um, as it is going to be impossible to discuss every travel anecdote that you have, we'd need a six hour long episode, I think. I'm going to go through some questions to find out how you rank some of the, the places that you've been to, if you're, if you're going for that. Let's do it. Sound. Uh, okay, a easy one. Oh, not an easy one. Off the bat, favourite country? I know it's going to be quick. So, I mean, favourite country to live in is Thailand. Favourite okay. country to visit... It's a bit controversial now after the last 10 months that we've had, but probably China. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Where, where in China? So, I mean, you go to countries like Iran or Sri Lanka and the people are really friendly, like crazy friendly. You can hardly pay for your own cup of tea. China is not like that, let's say, diplomatically. Mm. But what it does have is a huge mass. So you've got like Paradise Islands in the east, like around Hainan. You've got Tibet. I mean, strictly speaking, although... They should be recognized in their independent countries. They're not. You've got Hong Kong in there. Then you've got the big powerhouses like Beijing and Shanghai. And then you've got rural China, inland China, like Shangri-La. And, and there's a city in the Northwest called Urumqi, where you have kind of Eurasian looking, almost Caucasian Chinese people, uh, where their Chinese Muslim population lives. And they're almost white, but speaking full Chinese accents, eating noodles. And it's like a really interesting cultural mix. So mm. just it offers so much, it offers everything that you could want as a traveler. Yeah. Yeah. One thing, not quite the same, but Japan is one place that I went to that I'd, I'd love to go back. Um, and part of that, that reason is because they don't give a toss what we are doing here. They're like, they're so, they have their own culture. They have their own little trips away internally. And it's just, yeah, I'd, yeah, I'd, I'd love to see that because you get sick of going to places sometimes, and everyone like, they want the the foreigners to be there so much yeah, because they need absolutely. the tourism. Whereas Japan's not asked. Yeah, cool country. I was there last year actually. I do a lot of um, charity stuff these days, and my mum's got Parkinson's, and she's for her seventieth birthday. I took a group of oldies to um, Mount Fuji, and we all climbed Mount Fuji together for cure Parkinson's. It was cool. Oh, class. Incredible. Well, we'll definitely come on to some of that charity work that you, that you have been doing. Um, onto these questions, though. One, crunch, one country that you wouldn't return to and why? Oh, there's a country in West Africa called Guinea. Not Papua New Guinea and not Guinea-Bissau. It's Guinea. Right. It's where the camera comes from. I don't know okay. if you remember. It. Okay, yeah. Um, and it is kind of lawless and a bit rough and ready. It took me like 18 hours in the back of a motorbike through the jungle to get into the country. And when I was there, I stayed in this crap Chinese hotel that some Chinese guy opened in the port. It was the only place that was open to foreigners like because there's no tourist infrastructure. I was there for three nights, paid $100 a night. It was pretty expensive for West Africa. It was an absolute shithole, cockroaches all over my room. And then one, I tried to leave on the, the third morning. I was like, i got to get out of this place because uh, Senegal is to the north of it. And that's a cool country. Um, and I wanted to get into Senegal. I went downstairs to leave the hotel and I could just hear gunshots outside. And I was like, oh, I've got a bus booked. What? I said to the reception girl, I've got a bus booked. What's going on? She's like, oh, they've blown up the prison wall. All the prisoners have escaped. The police wow. are them. And I'm stuck in the hotel. And we, were on lock we were on lockdown then. It was like three years ago or whatever. And there's just people running. The police are just running around <laughs> shooting, like trying to shoot criminals on the streets of, of Guinea. Conakry is the name of the capital I think and mm. it was a wild it was horrible anyway and then that happened I'm like get me out of this place well yeah I won't be booking a flight there anytime <laughs> soon um what about the most underrated place that you've been ah it's a good question um god it's just because I've been everywhere so, I've got so many answers mm. <laughs> um a cool country but I think it's starting to get a bit of a buzz actually I don't know maybe it's because I'm deep in the travel community but it's Ethiopia have you been seeing hearing much stuff about people I haven't, going to be honest but okay yeah. that's, that's cool and it's got loads of cool stuff there's this place in in northeast Ethiopia it's the oldest Islamic city in Africa and there's this old generation of guys who one guy lost his wife 150 years ago and he was really lonely he started feeding the, the, with these wild hyenas outside the city and the hyenas have continued to die and breed and die and breed. And they're kind of like friends with this family. And his son then fed them and his son fed them. And now there's a guy there about 40 who still feeds these wild hyenas. And you can go and see the wild hyenas getting fed. And when I went there, he like sticks a big stick on his, on his 
uh, he sticks a stick in his mouth and sticks a big bit of red meat on it. A hyena comes and bites the meat off off the stick right face to face, and then he sticks the stick in my mouth, and he's like, "You do it, you do it." And I've got this massive hyena biting this piece of red meat, like literally two centimeters from your nose. Wow, yeah, I don't see that much in England. <laughs> what about the most <laughs> overrated place that you've been? Ooh, wow, overrated. Hmm. You know, I'm quite a positive guy, to be honest, mate. And I feel like there's beauty to be found everywhere, whether it's the people that you meet or the things that you see. Yeah, I mean, of, obviously, no in Thailand. You know Thailand quite well yourself. Like, I would say Phuket is quite an overrated. Mm. Yes. Yeah, I didn't enjoy Phuket at all, to be honest. I don't, I don't like it. Anywhere that's been overdeveloped to chase tourist dollars, Cancun as well, another mm. shithole. Have you ever been there? I haven't been Cancun, no, no. But I imagine it to be almost similar to Phuket, but with slightly yeah. younger people. Yeah, but they're not my... But then there's a guy, if people want to go there, good luck to them, it's just not for me. Yeah, yeah, no, fair enough. Uh, this one might be quite difficult. What is the weirdest thing that you've ever seen? Oh. Whoa, wow. I don't know, but I'm, I ate... Uh, I'll tell you the weirdest thing I've ever eaten is mm. I'm a vegetarian, for, I have been for years, but when I wasn't, I went to North Korea and I got served up a bowl of dog soup when I was in this temple and in North Korea, which is quite an odd experience. And one time I was in, one time I was in a night market in China. I was eating, I was handed this like street food again before it was a, ve- a, veg- a veggie, and there was like a, t- a circular piece of meat on it. And I don't know if you know that, but pigs' penises are are also like a little bit like their tails are quite circular. Right. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm not surprised you're vegetarian after some of those things <laughs> that you've eaten. <laughs> um, do you have? Do you still have a comfort zone? Yeah, of course, but I'm really wary of it because I know that like the whole cliche is so valid that like the magic happens outside your comfort zone. So I really try to challenge that literally on a daily basis. But a comfort zone I have when I'm in back in Bangkok with my missus and my mates, and I've got my gym, and I watch. I know what time Liverpool are kicking off, and I, I can I can drink on some days, and I eat healthy on these days, and I, I do have a routine there. Although I might just be saying that because I got locked down there over COVID. So I had to do that. I'd never done that previously, but that was quite a comfortable time for me. But then, like, you're, I'm a big believer in this, mate, that the level of achievement, whatever you dub your achievement to be, whether it's financial, traveling to every country in the world, having a good body, speaking lots of languages, whatever it is, the level of discomfort that you're willing to accept is com- directly correlated to the amount of success you're going to have in life. Uh, and I'm very conscious of that. So I try not to get too comfortable. Yeah, yeah, no, fair enough. What about the most interesting person that you've ever met? Wow. I know a guy who should have been interesting, but actually it was boring. I met her. Uh, um, There's a guy called Robert Scott. Is his first name Robert? And he was the first British guy to try to go to the North Pole. I met his grandson when I was going to Antarctica one time, which is really cool. But actually he was just a boring guy who was living off his granddad's uh, story. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's that's disappointing. What about oh, I, met on your tr- I met a really cool Indian guy once. He comes from like poverty in India, and now he's a multimillionaire. He's about 33, 34, super humble, quiet guy. I traveled with him in Argentina, and he made his money. Now he's got now he owns a little startup tech company that he's got offices in Singapore and Dubai, which makes good money. But he made when he was like 28, he, he met this Russian guy because he's so lovely, everyone loves him when you meet him. And he met some Russian guy who turned out to be a billionaire, and he brokered the sale of a submarine from some rich Indian guy to this Russian guy. And that's how he made his money. So he made like 500 grand off this submarine sale. And he was just a normal dude. Like he's not in that world. And then and, and he had this opportunity to do this. That's mad. Yeah, it's not what you know. It's who you know. Yeah, we yeah. Go. Have you ever, ever really struggled emotionally on your travels? Yes, actually, really badly. When I finished my journey to every country, which was 2017, and I started in 20 in 07. So basically it was 10 or 11 years. And my sister actually had warned me about it. She's quite a spiritual kind of hippie type girl. My sister is. And she had told me in advance because she knows I'm a very like type A personality, set a goal, focus on it, blinkers, don't deviate, which is what I'm doing now for all my other new challenges. But this had been such a long one, 10 years. <clears throat> she told me to be, be ready for the low that I would feel after achieving it. Um, and then I went to my last country, which was Norway. I had a big celebrations. Friends and family all came to my final country. And then, like, for about nine months, I, like, I didn't really realize it until the 
following year, I got fat. I was drinking loads, like five, six nights a week. I wasn't, my business went to shit. I wasn't doing any of my accounts. Whatever came in, came in. I wasn't doing any outreach. I wasn't recording anything. Didn't produce any blog posts for months on end. And then I look back at it retrospectively and I'm like, whoa, I was, I mean, I'm, I'm loath, I'm hesitant to use the word, but I was probably depressed, you know, the worst shape I've been in my life, most of drunk in my life, less than, less than money I've made for you because it wasn't motivated to do anything that really affected me. And then that actually carried on through 2018 a little bit too. And it was only 2019, I started to look at it and be like, oh, wow, I need to sort myself out here.